goal of this presentation is to is just to reinforce some concepts that we are talking for a long time that is how important it is to improve the therapeutic strategy of endometriosis treatment even because nowadays we 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 don't think that is accept, acceptable uh, acceptable uh, for us to go for a surgery without knowing what we can uh, have right even for many things that I'm trying to discuss here so this is uh, uh, just a, an example of uh, what we are we are talking about this is a surgery a laparoscopy for a patient with endometriosis compromising the bowel, the left ureter, uh, with uh, adhesions. And uh, the issue is, uh, in 2015, 2016, uh, we don't think that we can uh, discover, we can decide about what uh, is going to be done during the procedure. Uh, during the procedure, we, we, we must think about before we must discuss with the patients. We must consider the implication about uh, possible complications, how to prepare the team. Uh, in other words, it's a, it's a, a very important issue that uh, is contributing a lot for us to reduce the complication rates and to improve a lot of things related to the surgery for endometriosis. So I'm going to talk about a few concepts and the prevalence of the different types of endometriosis, the clinical and imaging considerations that we have nowadays in hands, uh, why the pre-op information is so important, and some perspectives for us to go ahead. We know that when we talk about endometriosis, we are talking about three different diseases, and, and the most important disease for us to predict, to define the strategy, for sure, is the, the deep disease that was described after uh, this publication of 90. Uh, from the Belgian group, from Cornil and, and co-authors. And we know that when we, we look for our experience in, in the Sao Paulo University, uh, considering more than uh, 1,200 cases, you can see that in 40% of our cases we have deep endometriosis. And what is very relevant is that in half of this 40% or in 20% of all cases, we may have endometriosis compromised in the bowel. So this is something that we need to think about before the surgery. So, of course, we need to think about the symptoms. We need to, good, uh, to do a clinical exam, and this is a, a study that we published a few years ago, just to reinforce that deep endometriosis is more related to pain uh, in terms of dysmenorrhea, non-cyclic pelvic pain, uh, dyskesia, or even deep dyspareunia, and it's also more related to infertility. We are sure now that after uh, many, many studies that there is also a connection. But also, uh, in addition to a good clinical uh, evaluation, we, we can use now uh, good imaging methods. We started using transrectal ultrasound. That is something that we don't use anymore. And then we defined uh, studies looking for which method should be the best one for us to, to define the strategy for the, the procedure. The transrectal ultrasound uh, was a publication that we made in 2004, showing that it's a feasible method, but uh, because of it, it's a, a more expensive method, it needs a sedation to be done. It, uh, for public health purposes, it's not easy for us to, to, to do transactive ultrasound or uh, for 10 to 15 percent of women in reproductive ages, and of course, it cannot define other sites of the disease. So because of this, we started working a lot with ultrasound, with transvaginal ultrasound, with a simple bowel prep, with a simple protocol, uh, for us to look for situations like this, when even the laparoscopy, sometimes we only see the tip of the iceberg, as you can see here. And when we do a clinical exam and a, a good transvaginal ultrasound, it's is possible for us to identify a nodule to be resected and, of course, to prepare a good strategy for us to treat properly the, the, the patient. Uh, this is a publication that we made in 2007 and, and at a human reproduction showing that 
uh, we have a very nice sensitivity with transrectal, transvaginal ultrasound for the rectal endometriosis, the endometriosis compromised in the rectum with a sensitivity of 98%. That is much better than MRI. MRI, you can see here that it was here 84%. And even for other sites like the trans, uh, the retrocervical endometriosis, the sensitivity of the ultrasound is, is, is better than an MRI, as you can see here. So just to, to see that we can associate an imaging method, a simple one, with a good clinical exam, and we can look for more information to define the strategy. This is a, a, another very simple paper that we, we published in 2008, and we, we, we had a, a, the, the award of the best endometriosis paper of AGL last, that year, showing that endometriosis lesion, lesions that compromise the rectum deeper than the inner muscularis layer may have uh, more than 40% of the circumference of the rectum affected by the disease. This was the conclusion of this study, but just to show you that it's even possible to use imaging methods for us to, to predict the deepest layer compromised by the disease, the distance between the, uh, the, the lesion and the anal verge, and even the circumference of the bowel that is affected by endometriosis. In this study, we evaluated morphologically uh, 40 patients with bowel disease, and we, were, we tried to correlate the, the depth of the lesion with the circumference of the bowel affected by endometriosis. And this is what we found, right, that when the deepest layer compromised was the outer muscularis layer, we had a mean circumference of 29%. 51 when the inner muscularis was affected, uh, 60 when the submucosa was affected, and 81 when the mucosa was affected. Just to reinforce that for sure we are trying to think about what procedure needs to be done. And for uh, situations where we have more than 50% or more than 40% of the circumference affected, it's not possible to remove a disc. It's imperative to, for us to, to, to propose uh, a segmental resection. So, again, we can use imaging methods to find, to, to, to give us information like this. This is the, the, the publication from 2009, uh, also in, in human reproduction, just showing that we can have this additional information, as you can see here. So, we know that uh, in situations where we use the, the ultrasound for this purpose. We can also uh, look for the endometriosis compromising the ileum, the appendix, and other sites of the disease. So, of course, we, we, we have important information like the distance between the lesion and the anal verge using MRI or ultrasound and uh, defining with a, a reasonable sen uh, sensitivity uh, these information according to to, to the strategy that we are going to plan uh, to treat this patient. Uh, this is uh, uh, an ultrasound showing that uh, there is an ileum compromised by the disease, and this is very relevant for us because we know that the chance for the patient to have a bowel obstruction is higher in the, when the disease compromises the ileum than when the disease compromises the rectum. And we can also look for information like this, endometriosis compromising the diaphragm. And for this purpose, when the patient has, has pain in, the, in her shoulder, right shoulder, uh, during the, the period, uh, MRI is the best method for the, for, to provide us this information. And we are looking more and more nowadays for more specific information like this, because we know that uh, to, to know when the lesion uh, infiltrates the nerves, not only the hypogastric nerves, but the sciatic nerves or other nerves of, of the pelvis. It's important for us to think about this before the surgery, to plan the procedure, to discuss with the patient, or even to think twice before going ahead and indicating the procedure. So why the pre-op information is so important? We know that no surprises. We can organize the team we can organize the bowel prep. The other important issue is 
we, for sure, we can reduce the risk. I'm sure that we have nowadays less than 1% of fistula in our, uh, we, we are doing many, many bowel cases in, in, in Sao Paulo, and we, we truly have less complications, not only because of the surgical technique, because of what, how we plan the procedure, so this is very relevant. To optimize the results for the patient, that is, of course, essential for this purpose, and also to reduce legal problems, that is for sure in this country, mainly in this country, but all over the world, this is a, a, a very relevant a statement for us to, to, to pursue, and to look for a one-shot surgery, because we know that in many situations when we, are talk, um, we, we talk about recurrence of the disease, we are not talking about the recurrence of the disease. We are talking about the persistence of the disease because there was a, a non-appropriate plan for the surgery. And at least uh, another situation is for research proposals. We can do much, a much better research when, uh, when we have, a, in Sao Paulo, a very strong tissue bank collaborating with with many, many groups all over the world, and uh, for sure uh, using this background of the pre-op information. This is another study from the group of Chaperon showing that the, the pre-op workup for patients with deep endometriosis uh, have on, in, in the transvaginal ultrasound the first-line imaging examination for this purpose. So this is something that is not an idea from our service in Brazil. We are we know that in many, many other services, many, even in this country, we already have uh, strong people doing a good job. Uh, we, we have, for example, uh, from people from Mayo Clinic, people from Chicago coming to, to train with us for this purpose. So this is essential for us to predict, and even what uh, Juan showed before, it's, uh, it's feasible, it shows that it's feasible for us to provide a map Right for not only for the surgeons but o o also for the patient, for her to have a, a very precise information before the procedure, uh, for 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 us to to have a good strategy. So what we do, we start with a good clinical examination. We do a transvaginal ultrasound. If it's normal, we think that the patient doesn't have disease or she has a disease in in the early stages, and we may be more conservative for this. Propose. If this is conclusive, we can uh, plan the treatment in a very appropriate mode. If we have questions about uh, the ovary here, we can do the MRI. Questions about the bowel or the rectovaginal septum here, we can indicate the transvaginal ultrasound. I think that the last time that I did it was more than five years ago, so because we don't need the transvaginal ultrasound nowadays. And, and questions about the urinary tract the MRI, Euro MRI or urography uh, may, may be considered. And for, for perspectives, we are finalizing an important study showing that we can even using imaging methods to try to stage the disease before the procedure. So this is something that is feasible and uh, we are planning to publish it soon. And we have other, other uh, Techniques coming like the elastosonography uh, for this purpose, or even the the ultrasound navigation with a, a 4D reconstruction as a perspective for us, uh, just to try more and more to to discuss right and uh, going to this having this goal here that is the image fusion for us to think about the disease in a more appropriate mode before. The, the surgery. So thanks a lot. It's a big pleasure to be here. <laughs>